All right, legends, today I'm gonna to show you how to fix your snare drum. Cause as far as mixes go, the snare is here, vocals and everything else comes underneath it. Cause the hard truth is if your snare sounds like garbage, then your mix is gonna sound like garbage. <laughs> so as much as we love compression, saturation, reverbs, none of that matters unless your EQ is good. So let me show you a couple of EQ moves that are gonna get you out of trouble 90% of the time and help you pull a great snare tone. So we're gonna take our snare drum from this. to this. With just four simple EQ moves. Make sure you hit that like button before we go any further. Okay, so I've got my snare and I've got my snare bottom mic and I've got a snare sample that I'm blending together and they're all going to a snare bus. And that is where we're gonna process this and EQ our snare sound. So this is what we're sounding like currently. You know, it's not bad but it's a bit mid-rangey. I wanna make the snare crack a little bit more, bring out some of that high-end excitement, give it a bit of low-end body, and just polish this up a little bit. Okay, so on my snare group, I'm just gonna load up an SSL style channel strip. So we're using the Waves one today. So our first move, we're gonna look at bringing out some crack and some high-end detail out of the snare drum. So it's a pretty simple one. We're just gonna boost at 8K with a high shelf. Now you can sweep this from around seven to 10K to get that nice airy cracky top end. It can depend on the snare and the tuning a little bit. You can also switch between a shelf and a bell, but I find that the shelf sounds a little bit smoother, especially when you're dealing with cymbal bleed in the snare mic. The bell can sometimes bring out a bit of harshness in the upper mids but you can fiddle with that and figure out what sounds good for you. Now we're gonna do all these EQ moves in the context of the drum mix. So I'm gonna have everything playing at once and we're gonna EQ this until it sounds cool. Around there, so almost 10 dBs of high shelf there. Sounds great. Now the next thing we're gonna look at bringing in a little bit of low end thump and body to this snare. This depends on the tuning of the snare. If you've got a really low tuned snare, you're gonna to have to move this down a little bit. And for most stuff that's sort of in that mid range area, it's gonna be roughly between 180 and 200 Hertz. That's kind of a usual go-to spot. And we're gonna boost this with a bell. Now, if you had a real thumpy low end snare, you'd maybe be looking around 120 to 150 Hertz. That would be like a real deep fat boy snare. But for this one, I think we're gonna look at around 180 Hertz and try boosting around there. That's sounding pretty cool around there. That's about, that's about nine dBs of boost with a bell at 180 hertz. Next thing we're gonna do is add a bit of a smack to our upper mids here. Don't want it to get too scooped out. We still wanna keep some of that mid range information there. The place we're gonna look for this is probably around two and a half to 4K. Somewhere in that region, we're gonna find a nice spot. So let's boost up, have a little bit of a sweep and find where the, the attack on this snare is. Kind of around there at 3.2, sounded pretty good. Might bring this down a little bit though. It's a bit much at the moment. So around four dBs of a boost with quite a wide bell. I like the bell to be a little bit wider. It sounds a bit more musical. When it's narrow, it gets kind of like pokey sounding on the EQ. So we've just boosted up this high mids and it sounds quite nice. Now the last thing we can look at doing is just cutting out some mid range. If there's a bit of a honkiness in the snare or like a bit of a pongy kind of ring, then we can try and deal with that with this last move here. So we're gonna do a quite a narrow band. We're gonna look from anywhere between like 400 Hertz to 1K in that region. There's usually something in the snare that's, that's not very pretty. We've kind of boosted everything around this area already. So we might not need to cut that much because Technically, we have kind of already cut this area because we boosted everywhere else around it. But let's see if there's anything there that we can get rid of. Let's just solo the snare for this. Kind of around there, it's a bit of an annoying sound to me. It always sounds like someone's smacking a pair of shoes together to get the dirt out of them. 
Oh, I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know what I mean. It's, it's not a nice sound. So let's pull out a little bit of this. You hear as we dipped it out, it fattened up quite a bit actually. So we've pulled out about three dBs of that. Let's have a listen to this in the mix and bypass it on and off and see how we went. I don't know about you guys, but that sounded way better to me. Those EQ moves have brought the snare to life. It's given it that cracky top end, nice bumpy low end, and scooped out some of that mid-range mud and honkiness that we don't want to hear in our snare sound. As long as you're working on tracks that have been recorded pretty well and the drummer can actually play and hit the drums nicely, then you're not going to have that much trouble. These EQ moves are going to get you out of trouble 90% of the time. And if you're interested in learning a couple more techniques for getting depth and character out of your drums, make sure you stick around and follow the link to the next video. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you can keep up with all the videos and I'll see you in the next one.